guys, welcome to Consume the Goodness. My name is Kendra. I'm a certified lifestyle and weight management coach, and this channel combines healthy lifestyle with God's word, and just here to hopefully give you some helpful, helpful encouragement. A couple of people left in the comments some suggestions for the upcoming challenge, the next like challenge that I'm gonna give myself, separate from the workout challenge. So also, for those of you who don't know, what I've been doing for this year, and what I will continue to do for this year is that each number, each number, each month I will draw a number and whatever number I draw out is the number of workouts that have to be done for that month. So that is something I'm doing right now. So if anybody is new here and you guys see like at the end of the videos where it says like workout, you know, one of 13 or two of 11 or whatever, that's what it is. Whatever that number is, you know, so like for this month for March, the number that was drawn out was 11. So I am doing 11 workouts for the month of March. And then at the end of March, I'll draw another number and that'll be what I do for April. But I've been doing other things like at the end of last year, I did one with a little black dress and I zip up the black dress by my birthday because I wasn't able to zip it up before. And then I did a pull up uh, again, I did like a pull up challenge and I still can't do a pull up or a chin up. <laughs> and so I'm still going to be working on that. But this time, uh, two of you guys in the comments gave me suggestions and so I'm going to do both of them. So I'm going to do a plank uh, and dead hangs. I'm not really sure, like I guess today I will do both of those things and see how long I can hold them now. And then I'll decide after that like how long what I should be aiming for. And I'm gonna do it till my husband's birthday because that's the next thing that's coming up in May. So we're gonna do that today and then I'll show you my, you know, the workouts that I've done so far this week. And also just because of time, but also, well, just for a few different reasons, but since I wasn't able to do a skit this week, I'm just gonna like talk a tiny little bit about, well, the plan is always a tiny little bit. <laughs> Sometimes I talk way longer than I plan to, but I just wanted to talk about fear of the unknown. It pertains to anything. It can, it can be in our healthy lifestyle and our walks with Jesus and so many different things. So just some different examples of the fear of the unknown. Maybe something like when it comes to your healthy lifestyle. Like I want to start, like start this healthy lifestyle thing because it's a lot of change and that's a lot of like changing how I eat and how I grocery shop and what if I fail? Like what if I do really, really well at first and I lose weight and I lose health problems, but then I Or maybe when it comes to working out. Like, I don't want to work out because I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know the proper form. Or what if I hurt myself? Or what if I work out and I don't see results? Or what if I look stupid in front of people? Or maybe something that seems really awesome. Like, oh my gosh, this job opportunity that I just got is really, really awesome. Like, I can't believe they called me and they actually wanted to do this. Oh, crap. That's a really big responsibility. Oh, no. So, I don't know about this. Like, this is really big time. I'm really going to be out there. Millions of people are going to see me, which means millions of people are going to be judging me. This is a really good company. What if I mess up? What if I turn out to not be an asset like they think I'm going to be? I don't want to make this company look bad. I'm not doing it. I'm not calling them back. So there are all kinds of things that we can, I'm sure there are plenty of things you guys can think of too, of just examples of being afraid of what we don't know. Fear of the unknown. Because we're gonna fall, like we're gonna fall, we're gonna fail, we're gonna mess up, and it, we're going to be uncomfortable. Like if we stay in our cozy little comfortable bubble that we, you know, can pretty much control, we only do things that we are like pretty certain of what the outcome is going to be. We only do things that are pretty certain, like we know exactly what it's, you know, we, I know anything can happen, but the, where we have a pretty good idea of how this is going to turn out or only things that we have experienced before. So we're comfortable with it. We know what it's like. We, you know, we don't want to step out and try anything new because that's unknown territory. It's scary. We're not going to grow if we do that. When we fall and when we fail, that's awesome because we learn something like it for I mean the majority of us will learn things when we fall because we get back up and through that process we're learning and we're growing and when we step out of our comfort zone we are experiencing new things which means we're learning new things we are growing we're becoming wiser all of these things and when when we do that we're improving which is awesome and then also just stopping to think, which I was thinking about this as I was thinking about talking about this, that fear of the unknown is literally being afraid of something we don't, that, that possibly isn't even a thing. Like we're afraid 
of an outcome that potentially it just doesn't exist. It will never exist, but we're still afraid of it just because we don't know it. So like, have you ever thought about like maybe there's a conversation you have to have with somebody or there's something that you need to tell someone and you're afraid to do it because you are afraid of how they're going to react or the response or whatever. And then when you, you either, and then you, then when you finally do it, if you do it at all, it turns out not to be that bad. You're like, oh wow, that wasn't as bad as I thought. Or maybe it was horrible. Maybe it's worse than what you thought. But still, that is a moment that sucked really bad, but it's something that you experienced and now you know how to handle something like that even better. Now, if somebody comes at you like that again, you're like, okay, well, I've gone through this before. So I, um, I feel a little bit I know that I can keep my composure maybe a little bit better than I did before. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just talking now. <laughs> I don't even know if this makes sense. I hope it does. But I guess the whole point of what I'm talking about is that it is like really stop and think about what we could be holding back. Like by being afraid of what we don't know, we're holding ourselves back from growing. When we hold ourselves back from growing, we're holding ourselves back from improvement. So doing things that are uncomfortable and trying something new and then failing at it. And I don't know, I don't even know what I'm trying to say. Like it's all opportunities to grow. And really everything is unknown. Like even the stuff that we're comfortable with, even cooking a meal, that is unknown, the outcome. Like we might think we know how it's gonna turn out, but we don't actually know. But it's still unknown territory because we haven't done it yet. So we don't know what's gonna happen. We don't know if somebody's gonna smash into our car or if the food is gonna burn or if, what are the other examples I said? If while we're cleaning, we're gonna slip and fall or you know tumble down the stairs with the vacuum cleaner while we're vacuuming the stairs or if we're gonna slip while we're in the shower. Like, it's still unknown. Every single thing that we haven't done yet is unknown to us. So if we think about it like that, some things are unknown that we are more comfortable with, but it's still unknown. So everything is unknown. So why are we going to be afraid of it? And everything was unknown at some point. Everything that we do, we didn't just, we weren't just born knowing how to do every little thing that we do in our jobs or at home or as a parent or as a husband or wife, as a homeowner, as a driver, like all of these things, it's all new for a while and then it's not new anymore and then we're not afraid of it anymore like I had, man oh man does this stuff even make sense do I have a point hopefully in all my rambling you guys are able to like pick certain things out. oh like oh yeah yeah okay I think I pretty much get what she's trying to say because I don't know I mean I know what I'm trying to say I don't know if you guys know what I'm trying to say because I'm just talking so I don't know if it's coming out very well the main thing I would want you to take from this is that our relationship with Christ and I'm not talking about religious anything like that just the relationship that's the important part I know this is totally off topic. It's not that, you know, we do these certain things on these certain days and we pray in this very specific way. Nothing like that. Like as a Christian, it is a relationship. And so when you have that relationship with Jesus, with God, it helps in this area. I mean, it helps in every single area of our lives, but the fear of the unknown, it's easier to not be so afraid it's easier because you have faith and because you can tell yourself because you know I don't know how this is going to turn out I don't know what's going to happen but I know that God knows and that's all I need to know I'm not going to be afraid of the unknown because it's unknown to me but it is known to him so what do I have to be afraid of fear and faith do not coexist fear and worry and like really overthinking things and panicking and, and I mean it is fear I mean all of those things really kind of are all tied up in fear Welp, that's all of my rambling I hope that it made sense and I hope that you got some type of encouragement from it and uh, yeah something else I just thought of on a more personal note when it comes to fear of the unknown that I'm sure I'm not the only one it's not so much now but before and for years of my past fear of our lives like fear of the unknown as far as medical 
issues go like what's gonna happen what is gonna happen to me how much longer am i gonna be here am i gonna die the next time something happens is that gonna be the last time something happens thinking about what's gonna happen next the next time i go to the hospital am i gonna come home from the hospital the next time i hit my head is that gonna be the last time because i've fallen you know quite a few times and every time i hit my head it always happens to be right here in the front and then having a nurse tell me, you gotta be really, really careful because the next time you hit your head, if you hit it just right, you know, if you hit it really good, that could kill, like, that might be the last time that it ever happens because you won't be alive anymore after that. So then fear of the unknown of, unknown of that. It took quite a while of to not be afraid to be in the car, like in the passenger seat, or just scared, like, oh my gosh, what if somebody hits us? What if we get in a car accident? And then... I hit my head and then I'm gonna die and then I won't be here anymore or Pat what if I pass out again and I smash my head again so then that type of fear and then that fear of the unknown so you have that fear but then you have beyond that again thinking of things that haven't even been a thing just being afraid of it like I don't want to hit my head again and die what if the next time I hate something happens what if my heart stops like stop stops and then I'm and then I won't come back or you know what if my heart rate and my blood pressure dropping crazy low what if that happens and then they can't and then what if it doesn't come back up what if it just keeps dropping 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 till i die and then you start to think about other things oh then my kids aren't gonna have me <laughs> but what about my kids and then i won't be able to watch them and then my husband and then he would have to do it all by himself or you know the parenting part just the thought of of your family having to like go on without you and the pain that they would feel or whatever. So fear of the unknown can pretty quickly and pretty easily start to like take over our thoughts because we're just like what, what I just used as an example. What happens if, you know, like I'm afraid of what isn't happening. It's not even a thing, but what if it does happen? What if my medical stuff gets worse? What if I hit my head and I die? What if? And then that turns into thinking about your kids and your family and you not being there anymore. And then that turns into, and that turns into, that turns into, like, you just keep going on and on. So learning to have some type of grasp on that and to really hold tight to your faith. Hold tight to your faith. Cannot live with fear. It just can't. It doesn't work. Because if you have faith, you're not afraid. And if you're afraid, you don't have faith. You can't say, yeah, yeah, I, I do have faith. Like, I believe that God knows what he's doing. He's taking care of us. And I have faith that my life is what it is going to be. And even if something happened and I wasn't here, I have faith that some good is going to come out of it. And my family will be okay. They're, you know, they're going to have a lot of good that comes, you know, something good will come of it. And that will be also be a thing for them to go through. And it might be hard, but they're going to come out stronger in the end. You know, all that kind of stuff. That's more faith talk. Fear talk, you know, you can't say, yeah, I do have faith, but I'm still afraid. I'm still worried. I still, it's still, you know, you just can't. It doesn't, they don't go together. They just don't live together. They don't. So being someone who has, have, has had a lot of, fear of the unknown type thoughts it's not a very fun way to be it's like it's just not because you're constantly thinking about it you're always worried you're always afraid you're always nervous um anxious sad because of your because you're thinking of all these things that aren't even an actual thing i wanted to add that in there i'm feeling however i'm feeling like kind of eh, i don't know it kind of feels like my body's maybe trying not to get sick or maybe it's a stupid daylight savings time crap so my body's trying to adjust to a new time and so it's um like just hard on my body so it's making the symptoms of my medical stuff just like crappier so i was thinking about fear of the unknown as far as medical stuff goes because those thoughts started to kind of creep back in and then i was like nope not doing that and then that made me think hey i could actually talk about that Workout 6 of 11. Done. 
see how long I can do a dead hang. So we have a starter time to see what I have to be at for your birthday. Ready? And, and go. go. Well, that didn't work out very well. I don't know why I didn't think of this, and my husband was like, oh my gosh, I didn't think of that either, but when I have my arms above my head, it, it makes all of my symptoms bad, and then it's just not so good. So that's why I went down last night, uh, trying to do those dead hangs, and not so great. I did manage to go for, I think it was 20, 20 or 22 seconds, I don't remember. So it's pretty good, but everything's fine. I didn't get hurt when I like went down or anything. I managed to take a shower, and then my husband helped me with all the stuff after a shower, and then he brushed my hair. What's gonna work? Teamwork. He's so good. <laughs> so, we're just gonna do a plank. No dead hangs like what I was talking about yesterday, which we don't know what day that was. Oh, I hate planks. <laughs> so I'm gonna do, bless you, I'm gonna do a plank. So we're just gonna do a stopwatch and see how much time I can do that now. Then from there I will say, okay, I'm gonna have a goal to do a plank for this long by my husband's birthday. Stopwatch. All right, here we go. I believe in you. You can do it. Longer than I do. It's like 10 seconds of me. I don't know what the right form is. My shoulders are like this, they're like this. Feels straight across my back. I'm already shaking. <laughs> Day six. Give me yes. I feel like I should not be shaking this much often. <laughs> <sighs> well, you don't do it often. Or eight. I never do these. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So I said. Might help if you stop talking. Not that I'm a, a, an expert. I always talk. Sorry to not talk. Just keep okay, talking. I'll call it a minute. <laughs> it was a minute and something, but it lasted for a minute. So I will say that by May, on my husband's birthday, uh, what should I aim for like three minutes? Alright, so I'll aim to hold a plank, stay in the form for three minutes straight by. My husband's birthday, which is like the beginning part of May. Okay, so there's that, and I think that that is it for that. So, since I lost so much time last night, when I would normally be editing, I'm gonna do that now, and then I'll upload this, and you guys can watch it. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate the time you guys take to watch these videos. I truly do. I know I've said it so many times. That's because it's true. Thanks so much. God bless. I love you guys. And, uh, I hope to have you back for the next one.